Hello, everyone. Konbanwa minasan. Welcome to the Japan America Society Young Professionals Program, Tokyo Olympics, Japanese Design and Cosplay. Tonight, we mark the one month countdown to the opening of the Tokyo Olympics on July the 23rd. I am Lee San Gui, president of the Japan America Society. This program is part of our ongoing series on craftsmanship in production and the Japanese concept of takumi, particularly production processes that have been practiced and carefully honed and the adaptation of these traditional techniques to modern technology to accomplish the best possible manufacturing results. The series began last summer with the Japanese sake brewer in Brooklyn. The next segment featured Detroit's Shinola that perfectly fit the takumi theme because of their dedication to artisanal manufacturing processes, in watchmaking especially. The videos of these previous programs are available on the Society's YouTube channel, and the link is posted in the chat, along with the website and social media links. The Society welcomes new members, so please reach out to us. The whole Takumi FX series is sponsored by the Japan Foundation. Now, in these 30 minutes, I'm going to share a screen and show a presentation. We're going to see how the design of the Olympic logos and mascots so suited to high tech animation actually originated in the traditional manufacturing of Japanese fabric and ceramics. We'll begin with the Olympic logos, these two wreaths. We'll look at their structure and how they reflect long established Japanese manufacturing processes, as well as popular Japanese culture. And then we'll take a look at the same pattern on the Olympic mascots and see how they bring historical customs into the 21st century. And saving the best for last, we'll conclude with a five minute cosplay creation video produced by a Japan America Society young professional member, Elisa Itakura. So here in the blue wreath emblems of the coming Tokyo games, we can see that in the first, the circular shape of the blue wreath matches the circular shape of the familiar Olympic rings below it. The artist who designed the blue wreath calls them his harmonized checkered emblems. The second wreath on the right side for the Paralympic games also matches the more open crescent shapes of the Paralympic logo below it. What is it that makes the harmonized checkered emblems design so harmonious that it can seem just as balanced and customized to the Olympic rings as it is to the crescents? The key is in the very simple building blocks. The designs use only three shapes, two sizes of rectangles and a square. The three shapes are strung together on an invisible virtual grid. The ring shape of the first wreath emblem uses only nine of the squares and double that number, so 18, of each of the rectangles for a total of 45 units. The Crescent Paralympic logo uses the exact same number of units in different proportions. They turn and repeat on the negative space of the white background in sequences that result in the multifaceted structures. Now, the shape shifting pliability of the design reminds us of the geometry of origami. Some typical Japanese motifs appear. You can see fans in it. And in the outline of the open center, it suggests a chrysanthemum shape. The design's simple geometric composition makes it infinitely reproducible with only a ruler and a compass or three-dimensionally using a progression of cubes, spheres, and rectangular prisms. This is the designer, Asao Tokoro-san. In Tokyo, he studied architecture and was also trained in a sculptor studio both trades that go between the realms of the flat world of two dimensions, only length and width, and the built-up world of three dimensions, adding depth. 
his two-dimensional Olympic emblems seem to reach into three-dimensional space. The theme in his work is tsunagaru, or in English, to link. His geometric shapes and sometimes curved lines can be connected in different ways and are infinitely extendable based on the principle of organic tessellation or how shapes can fit together. It's also comparable to pixels, which is short for pixel picture element, the individual squares that make up a grid. And as the scalability factor is comparable to vector graphics. The binary alteration of voids between solids that make positive and negative spaces also reflects the underlying structure of the digital world. Or in atomic thinking, the larger pattern made up of smaller parts recalls that all matter is composed of the same smaller individual units. Even though it is a flat design of blue blocks on a white ground, it suggests three-dimensional space because the narrow rectangles give the impression that they could actually be the wider rectangle turned on its side, suggesting to the eye that there is space enough for it to turn in, almost like domino blocks, which creates the illusion that it has some depth dimension and denies that it is flat. The framed open center, the white space, also hints at expansion and outward kinetic movement. The digitization of the design in the following video demonstrates its expandability by geometric progression and replication. Now that's pretty high tech, but going now in the other historical direction, that is into the Japanese past, we find that the emblem is a very contemporary, sophisticated version of a classic Japanese checkered pattern that occurs when weaving fabric. When thread is woven across a vertical matrix in the weaving process, alternating the color of the horizontal and vertical elements creates squares of color. Matching the vertical solid color with the horizontal strip makes a positive square. Here we have black on black. And doing the same for the lighter color makes a negative. Checkered patterns that work for board games are familiar in many countries. They occur from the linear process of textile manufacturing, common everywhere. But in Japan, because of the infinite expandability of the checkered design, it was considered fortunate, reflecting the symbolic value of abundance, prosperity, and the suggestion of infinity. It is a motif taken up in ceramics and often using indigo blue, which is the traditional color of a craftsperson's uniform in Japan. The pattern on this ceramic bowl frames an open center very much like the Olympics reef emblem, but it was made in Arita in the 1700s. The, check, the checked pattern became known as, by the name Ichimatsu due to its Edo period fame 
that came from a kabuki actor. He was a celebrity named Ichimatsu Sanagawa, who wore the checked pattern fabric on stage. The spangled costume gave more dynamic interest by adding a kinetic energy that enlivened his performance. So it's called Ichimatsu. Long established Japanese artisan traditions like this fabric have been a major influence on international modern design and manufacturing, as well as digital technology. The simple geometric construction of Asao Tokolo's Olympics design of modular components make it very modern and also align it with digitization and computer technology. Now turning to the Olympic mascots, for the mascots, the harmonized checkered pattern is shaped into an athletic wear unitard. And the mascots were chosen from numerous proposals that made it through several rounds of cuts and were ultimately selected by the popular vote of Japanese primary school children. They are the design of Ryo Taniguchi. The mascots often make the transition from three-dimensional reality as they are here also on a stage like the Kabuki actor, to animated characters on a screen that have superpowers. This blue Olympic mascot is called Mirai Toa, which is derived from the Japanese words Mirai, meaning future, and Toa, meaning eternity. The designer of the Japanese Olympics Committee chose the name to promote a future full of eternal hope in the hearts of people, all over the world. Now with cat ears, the shape of his head harkens back to samurai helmet and Pokemon like his power of teleportation is derived from the helmet. The mascot also has the anime eyes of the Pokemon Mew. The pink mascot for the Paralympic games is Someiti named after the popular cherry tree variety called Somei Yoshino, which in English was meant to sound like so mighty, so meity. On this one, the same pattern appears in the pink color of a cherry blossom and the blossom shaped curve of the cape makes the animated mascot's flight possible like a fluttering cherry blossom. The cherry blossom tactile sensors or antennae on the sides of the face give Somaity telepathic abilities, including communication with natural elements such as stones and the wind and the ability to move objects simply by looking at them. Her physical and mental strength represent the superhuman power of Paralympic athletes who overcome obstacles and redefine the boundaries of what is possible. Now we're coming to Elisa Itakura's video of the Someity cosplay that she made here in Michigan. Hello everyone. My name is Elisa Takura and I'm a casual cosplayer. Cosplaying is an activity that involves wearing costumes that represent fictional characters. Before the pandemic, I would create two to three costumes a year in preparation to attend pop culture and anime conventions. I love cosplaying and I love to attend these conventions. It's like a big costume party. In celebration of the Tokyo 2021 Olympics, the Japan America Society had reached out to me to create a cosplay that represented one of the two Olympic mascots, Someiti. The Tokyo Olympics has two characters, Mirai Towa and Someiti. Unfortunately, I didn't have someone to cosplay Mirai Towa with me due to the pandemic. 
In the next few minutes, I would like to share the progress and the work behind the costume. First, I had to figure out how I can most accurately portray a fictional anamorphic character, meaning how can I dress up as a non-human-like character? Luckily, I had some experience dressing up as a non-human mascot in the past. This is my sister and I being Puzzle and Lyman from Pokemon, and this is us being Maya Melody and Karomi from Sanrio. As I was Googling Samaiti's character, I came across this fan-made drawing of the Olympic mascots in human form. This became my inspiration to create the costume. For the bodysuit, I purchased a blank white morph suit as the base. Then I got pink stretch fabric to utilize as the checkered pattern squares across Samaiti's chest. Once I completed sewing the pink squares onto the bodysuit, I began making the cape. The challenge with the cape is that I noticed it was not a traditional flowy superhero cape like you find on Superman. It was more so a pyramid shaped wing that allows the character to fly. I sketched out the shape of the pattern of the cape using craft foam. Then I cut pink and white fabric into the square shapes, similar to the checkered top I made. Once they were cut out, I simply sewed them all together according to the pattern from the craft foam and created both front and back of the cape. Then I stuffed the craft foam inside of the cape to hold its shape. Otherwise, it would droop and you would not see the pyramid shape as easily. I then attached the cape onto the suit by just simply sewing it onto the shoulders of the suit itself. Once I put on the suit, I realized that there was something missing. I noticed that there was a large empty space towards the lower abdomen area, which I didn't like. So I decided to quickly make a skirt using the leftover pink and white fabric. I'm sorry I didn't show the process behind the skirt. I just took a long strip of white fabric and cut it into a rectangle, then sewed a pink band using the pink fabric and then attached a zipper to it. Finishing the costume, I went and created the antennas. I apologize again as I didn't take photos of the step-by-step -step construction of this. But I essentially cut out the shapes using the pink craft foam and hot glued them together. And then I stuffed it with fabric on the inside to give it a three-dimensional shape. In order for them to stay on my head, I cut holes onto the antennas and slid the headband through. Now this is the final result. and the wigs were purchased, everything put together does make the costume come to life. Thank you so much for listening to the process behind making Samantha's cosplay. I had a lot of fun creating this and learning about the symbolism and history behind its checkered design. Thank you, Japan America Society, for providing me this opportunity to share this cosplay craft. Bye-bye. <laughs>
and named after a celebrity kabuki actor named Ichimatsu from the Edo period. And especially you'll know the significance of the theme of linking or connection in the design of the emblem and mascots of the Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games, since the objective of the Tokyo Olympics is to bring the world back together again. Thank you very much for attending. We hope to see you all again. So please join our Young Professionals group via our website for more programs. Check out our YouTube site for all the programs that we've had before. And of course, the social media sites and LinkedIn. I think you can see in the chat, we have all the social media sites. Nice to see everyone here tonight. Have a great night. I hope I see you soon. Bye-bye.